How much time have you lost fumbling with hex or RGB codes to craft the perfect color palette? Picking the right colors can feel intimidating as hell. And if you don't know how to dial in everything just right, you can feel like an imposter. But what if I told you there's a faster, more intuitive method than hex or RGB codes that we use in UX all the time to pick colors with ease? In this video, we'll cover what hex and RGB codes are and why they suck. We'll show you two magical methods that will change the way you pick colors until the end of time. We'll show you how to set this up in Figma and Adobe Illustrator so you can get started immediately. And finally, how quick and easy it is to create color palettes as a result of using these methods. Before we dive in, if you don't know anything about us, my name is Colton. I'm one of the co-founders of Kickass UX. We help graphic designers become unignorable UX UI designers. So if you want to learn UX and how to stand out from the crowd, you're on the right channel. And if you want to see more videos like this that will help you in your design career, don't forget to subscribe. So let's start out with what hex codes are and why they're confusing as hell. Kind of like trying to understand your grandma's Facebook posts. Hex codes are one of the digital ways of modeling color. They use three pairs of two numbers and or letters to represent red, green, and blue colors. Each of the six digits of a hex code range from zero to the letter F. Zero represents an absence of color, kind of like me in a snowstorm, while F is the max amount of color possible. That totals to 16 possibilities because there are 10 numbers ranging from zero to nine and six letters ranging from A to F. That's way too much to keep track of, like remembering all the damn passwords I've had to reset. Because you're a good designer, I'm sure you know that 000000, 000 is black and FFF, FFF is all white. So with all this in mind, here are the values ranging from black, 000, 000, all the way to the total amount of red you can get, FF0000. It starts at the first digit and goes zero through nine, then A through F. As soon as you use more than just straight red, blue, or green in a hex code, you'll get confused and discouraged. Kind of like trying to understand what a toddler is saying. For example, what would A4CFB0 look like? Who the f knows, right? If you're like me and you need closure on things, it's actually light green. Basically, hex codes suck. And RGB codes are just as bad as hex codes. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. To change the color of an RGB code, you choose a number between 0 to 255 for each of the three values. 255, 0, 0 is red, 0, 255, 0 is green, and 0, 0, 255 is blue. 0, 0, 0 is black, and 255, 255, and 255 is white. So with this in mind, what color would you expect 23, 175, and 102 to come out to? Again, if you're like me and you need closure, it's green. How the hell would you be able to tell that from those codes? You can't, unless you're the Rain Man. So again, RGB codes suck. But good news for you, there's a faster, more intuitive way, and that's using this color model, HSL. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. When using HSL, you first choose the hue. Then you choose how saturated you want it. Finally, you choose how light you want the color to be. Hue values range from 0 to 360, with 0 being red, 30 is orange, 60 yellow, 90 yellow green, 120 green, and so on. You can see the rest of the values on the screen. You'll notice that when you finally get to 360, it repeats like a circle. Saturation values are from 0 to 100. An HSL code with zero saturation means the color has no saturation, and 100 means it's fully saturated. Go figure. And lightness values range from 0 to 100, with 0 being black and 100 being fully white. So if you have a lightness value of 50, it's an even balance of white and black, meaning it makes the hue appear at its fullest potential. The higher you go up on the scale, the more white you add to the color, and vice versa when going down. It's like the HSL gods were trying to make it easy or something. <laughs> Here's an example of an HSL code, 30, 88, and 64. With all you know now, can you guess what color that is? For a little hint, just look back to the colors we just mentioned in the hue values. It's a saturated bright orange. All you have to do is look at the hue value, then look at the saturation and lightness, and you'll be able to know exactly what you're looking at. 
Once you start using HSL, you'll be able to look at this code and understand it at a glance, instead of feeling like you're deciphering the damn Enigma code like you do with RGB and hex codes. Do you have any idea what the hex code for this orange would be? Again, if you're like me and you can't stand open questions, it's F4A352. Yuck. If I were looking at that hex code, I would think it's the result of my cat walking across my keyboard, not someone trying to tell me what color to use. After dealing with hex and RGB codes, HSL is like a breath of fresh air, right? I can hear some of you now though, but what about the other color model, HSB? HSB is the fraternal twin to HSL. It's almost the same, but a little different. HSB stands for hue, saturation, and brightness, and it works like HSL. Hue also has values from 0 to 360. Both saturation and brightness also have values from 0 to 100, like in HSL. However, in HSB, saturation measures the colorfulness of a color compared to its own brightness. This means the two are more interrelated than in HSL. In HSB, a saturation of 0 is a shade of gray, regardless of brightness. A saturation of 100 results in the fullest intensity of a color at a given level of brightness. To get the brightest, most saturated version of a color, your saturation would be 100 and brightness is 100. By comparison, in HSL, the most saturated version of a color would have a saturation of 100 and a lightness of 50. And in HSL, a lightness value of 0 is always black and a lightness value of 100 is always white. That's not how brightness works in HSB. To get full white in HSB, your saturation would be 0 and your brightness would be 100. To get full black though, you only need a brightness value of 0 and it doesn't matter what saturation you have. I won't dive into the rest of the nitty gritty details of HSB. You can play around on your own for the specifics. So heck yeah, that's HSL and HSB. Choose whichever you prefer working with. So now you might be asking yourself, how do I use this in the software that I like to use, like Figma or Adobe? In Figma, it'll only take you a few clicks to set this up. First, select an element. Then select the fill in the right panel. Next, click on the dropdown that currently says hex. Then select HSL and you're done. Now, when you change a color within the fill menu, it will be in HSL. And of course, if you prefer HSB, it's right there for you too. P.S. We use Figma a ton during the UX process. It's by far our favorite program to use. On the other hand, if you're using Adobe Illustrator, they only have HSB. So if you want to use it, go to the color panel, use the menu in the top right and select HSB. Then you can change the colors using the three fields. Let's now look at how easy this makes choosing a color palette in practice. Choosing color palettes with hex codes is like playing darts blindfolded in a hurricane. You're throwing things into the wind and hoping you get lucky, but not with HSL or HSB. Let's say we wanted to pick colors for a website. We want our primary color to be blue in this case, and we also want a lighter and darker accent of the blue. There's not an exact science to choosing the primary, so let's just say that this is the blue we're aiming for. To create the lighter accent, we would duplicate the primary rectangle and then just increase the lightness by, let's say, 16%. To create the darker accent, we would duplicate the primary rectangle again and then just lower the lightness by 16%. Boom, we have a color palette that feels like it belongs together. And you did it with the power of science. Think back to what this would look like with hex codes or don't because it sucks. How amazing do you feel knowing that you no longer have to struggle to pick colors? You're now a color picking wizard like Gandalf the Saturated. Welp, that's it for this magical method. But remember how we mentioned the UX process earlier? If you wanna learn the UX process for yourself and start using UX in your design career, click the video on the screen to start our free UX course. By the end of the course, you'll build out wireframes for a famous company.